This is RC. It's your girl, K Marie. K hey, Wilk. It's your boy, Black. It's your girl, Lady. And I'm Sir. And you're listening to 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020 podcast. 2020. I did that one for you. Tuning in to another episode of a business minute. I'm your host, sir, and today I'm joined by Miss Latasha McGeon Williams. And uh, we're here at, on site actually at Architecture Hair Salon. Miss Tasha, how are you doing today? I'm well, how are you? All right, I'm doing great. I, I am actually excited about this interview because I've been dying to do this one, like, believe it or not. Ever since I first came here and saw the setup here, and I'll make sure that we do like a couple photos as well just so everyone can see how lovely you have it here I've been dying to get you so I'm glad you had me all right all right so Miss Natasha if you could just tell everyone what it is that you do well um, I have a hair salon and it's architecture hair salon um, I chose the name architecture because I deal with all different textures of hair and you know, architect is in ev- architecture is in everything. So mm. I put the two together, and um, I wanted to service every type of hair it was, and people from all walks of life. So, um, and I love making people look good, mm. and um, transitioning them from all relaxed hair to natural hair, or vice versa. You know, I'm, I'm into healthy hair. I'm not just into styling hair. All right, I heard that. Okay, so that leads me to one of my favorite starting questions. What inspired you to get into hair as a profession? Well, um, I knew as a child I wanted to do it. There was something about the lady who used to do my mom's hair and my hair and stuff I saw in the magazines, and I knew the curl needed to be this way or the color needed to be this way, so I paid attention to detail, and I told myself I'm going to learn to do that and uh, I'm going to learn every aspect of it because I don't like to turn money away you know mm. um, I, I ran into a lot of that like oh wow I can't do this and I said I don't want to tell anybody else that you know right. I, I want to keep the money here and if it's something I can't do I do want to have someone featured in the salon who can do that because we keep all the money here right. I, I think it's great to be versatile right 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 you, the community within a community. Yes. I, I like that. I like that. Okay. So that leads me to my next question. You know, were there any obstacles along this journey, you know, that you encountered or like anything that Well my my first obstacle started out well I started just shampooing in a salon when I was about sixteen mm-hmm. and I learned a lot from the stylist that I work with so I was kind of doing the 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 bootleg hairdresser thing shop hopping you know trying to avoid state board and that was an obstacle that I needed to overcome Mm -hmm. so I finally got licensed um, in 2009 Uh, I went to school in Atlanta and that opened up a whole new door for me because everybody in Atlanta was pretty much natural Mm -hmm. and um, I needed to learn how to do that because the the world was switching up their their ideas of how hair should be and what it used to be and how it can be. So um, I decided to come here to Mobile where there was a need, and my obstacle was getting people to try something besides a blowout, uh, which was what <laughs> everybody that was the thing. Yes, that's what they <laughs> tended to do, and or wear just a small afro. So, um, I, it, it actually spread it pretty fast. I came here and in about two months I built up a full, I built up a full book of clientele just based off word of mouth. I did no advertising wow. or, or anything like that. And, and I have people coming from, uh, all over Alabama, from Mississippi, from Louisiana, and as far as, uh, Pensacola and Fort Walton. Whoa. Yeah. So, um, and I'll say I I worked in a salon and I was comfortable working in a salon paying booth rent but then there comes times where you run into things at different salons you know working with different people and Mm -hmm. I said you know I'm gonna open up my own I don't want to lose clientele going from salons to salon 
I want right. to be stationary, so therefore I opened the salon. Right. And right. I, 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 I have been here for a year and two months now. All right, all right. So, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I wanted to ask, how long have you been doing hair in this, you know? Well, I, I've been in the game for about 23 years now. And, and, and I've grown and I've learned a lot and um, I, I know this is a passion of mine because I enjoy doing it and I don't mind staying at work, you know, mm -hmm. making the task complete. I heard that. So and I'm glad you brought that up because that kind of ties into my next question. Um, with doing hair being, you know, part of your work life and personal life, you know, how do you manage to balance the two? Well, um... I book my schedule according to what I have to do. Um, I'll come in early sometimes and I'll stay late sometimes. And if I'm in school, you know, I just book everybody around that. And, and it, it gets some people a little uptight, but, you know, I, I make it work um, because I love it and I, I don't want to lose the people, you know, so right. I, I have to find time because this is my profession and my craft. So, you know, I make the time for it. But, I make time for my personal life too because I have to have time outside of work to think and be creative and relax and you know just feel myself again and make myself pr prepare for the next day. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. And that leads me to another question, and this one isn't really on the list of questions I have, but just with the different hairstyles, like how do you manage to stay like with what's current? Um, social media uh, mm. is helpful. Uh, hair shows, um, Bronner Brother Hair Show, uh, which is usually held in Atlanta. It will be in New Orleans this year, which I'm thankful for. I don't have to drive that far. <laughs> and um, you have uh, the premiere show, which is in Orlando and Birmingham. Okay. And they may go outside and do other cities, but those two are the main two. The The Atlanta uh, Bronner Brother Show um, is a little more flamboyant. Um you have a lot of people there who push their own products mm -hmm. um, and a lot of retailers um, but it's basically Asian based because they have the beauty supply stores they they pretty much have the beauty supply industry sold up as far as hair is concerned and products are concerned and that's something that I would like to see more of us doing mm -hmm. um, because there's not a lot. There's only one black beauty supply store here that I know of, and that's First Choice. Oh, there's two. There's one on Moffitt Road. But there's just two, you know? Need more, right? It goes hand in hand, you know? Supply brings the demand. Mm -hmm. You bring the demand, you give it back to the supply, and so yes. you guys help each other. I'm um, definitely with that. So now, over 23 years of, of doing hair is is pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. That's, that's a lot of... You know, think that's a lot on your resume. Yeah. And uh, the thing I like about you, Mustasha, is that you sound so intimate about your clientele. You don't make them sound like you know just a customer. You make them sound like you truly value them oh, personally. Yeah. And so I, I really respect that. And I wanted to know over the twenty three years, has there been any one experience that really stood out in your mind and was like? This is why I do this. I, I, I like seeing things come together, but this particular oh yeah, client, really. Because uh, being a stylist, you know, you're kind of like the counselor, the, the, the friend, you know, the, uh, the, vent, the, the ventee, because the person has to vent to you, you know. Right. So um, there, there was, I have one particular client. She still comes to me now, and... Um, she developed breast cancer mm -hmm. and when she sat in the chair she was like I'll be getting all my hair cut off the next time so I heard her but I you know I'm just still doing her hair and then she said because you know I'm gonna be bald-headed when I come back and so I said why do you keep saying that and she said um because I found out that I have uh, breast cancer and I was like oh my god and when she said it you know I had my hands in her hair but it's like something went through my hands from her hair and I was like oh my god and then I just got dizzy and sick and I was like I just can't believe this I, I was like all you know all her hair but her health as well you know and 
and it did something to me. So I had to go sit down for a minute. And she just kept apologizing, and she said, you know, I hate I messed up your day, you know. Uh, I said, you didn't mess up my day. I said, you know, it just did something to me, I guess because we've grown close over the years, right. and then you tell me something like that. It's like my family member telling me, you know, some news that I wasn't expecting to hear. So my right side just kept throbbing, and I was like, why, do, why does this keep bothering me after she said this, you know? So... I went back into the room and I prayed about it. And then maybe a couple of weeks later, she came back in the salon and she said, well, they only found it on my right side and it didn't spread to my limp nose. And I was like, I wonder, is that why it kept echoing on my right side? You know, I was like, wow. this was more of a spiritual thing, you know, than mm -hmm. just a, a hair, you know, conversation. And you telling me that you, you have this illness now. So, um, I've gone through that with her, but I've also had about three more clients who have breast cancer who have gone through the same thing. So it's something I can be empathetic with them about because I've experienced, you know, with more than one client and, and help them transition through this and give them options um, with their hair and, and styling and stuff that they wouldn't normally be able to do, you know, mm. so... It, you know that that that's the thing for me I, I build great relationships and if it wasn't for my clients then I wouldn't be here right. so it's important that I service them because it, it's it's not just about styling I mean there's there's an art there's a mythology to this and um a science to it you know and mm -hmm. if I can expose those to it and teach them the things that that they need to know you know we can have a healthier hair lifestyle all right. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that. That was, whew, right. wow. <laughs> yeah, I almost cried. Yeah, I got a little cloudy <laughs> right there in my eye. Yeah. Okay. So, with with every every height as a low, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I always bring this up because it isn't always sunshine, you know. Mm -hmm. So, at any point, did you feel that you wouldn't be successful? And if so, who or what changed your mind? Well, I didn't think. I wouldn't be successful, but I did used to look at other stylists and say, God, how do did they get there? And I feel like I have the same skill, but I don't have the clientele that they had. And um, when I opened this salon, I was like, okay, now I've gotten to that point where I've built up the clientele. You know, I'm going to open me a salon and I'm going to run it, you know, the way I think it should be ran. And then it's like, okay, I got to get somebody else in here to work because all the overhead is on me you mm -hmm. know um and then I didn't factor in stuff like my sign when I um opened the salon and going to school full-time and trying to work full-time it, it was just a lot on me and I was like I don't know if I'm gonna make it you know through this because I've signed this lease and I'm obligated to this lease right. and if I don't fulfill it you know that's gonna go on my credit you know I'm gonna look bad and then I'm gonna have to go back to where I started at someone else's salon and I could I could have sucked that up and did that you know I don't have that much pride to not let me move on to the next thing but it was it was like let me figure this out let me just step back and pray about it you know and, and take baby steps and I didn't want to just hire anybody because I wanted this to be a family I wanted everybody to be dependable because whatever another stylist does will reflect on the entire salon mm -hmm. So um, that was the thing, but it you know it's panning out because who's supposed to be here is going to be here, right. and I'm not gonna hire anybody who doesn't have a skill set that I don't feel will satisfy a client. Like I I want you to d deliver your product and deliver a great service well. So that I'll say finding a stylist and trying to maintain has been the hardest obstacle through this because the clients will come. Um, and sometimes it's not about just the flyest hairstyle or the best cut or this. People want pe dependable people. Right. They want to know you're going to be there, you know. Um, Professional. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it makes a difference. I respect that. I heard that. Okay. Now, my next question, Ms. Natasha, is... What I call the long-term question. Mm -hmm. So, if you need a moment, I completely understand. I'll edit it. 
it out. Okay. <laughs> so where would you like to see yourself as a person in architecture, as a brand, in one year, in three years, and in ten years? Um, in one year, hmm, I like to see myself more spread along the Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. As far as the surrounding states, Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida, other parts of Alabama, training those who I can't service and get to, you know, through all these places. So I, I would love to offer classes and workshops to teach people to do what I do because I won't be here forever doing it. Right. You know, and it's it's a secret that I can't keep, <laughs> you know, so I'll teach it to somebody. In three years, I like to see myself in my own building um, because this lease will be up, so I will be looking for a building that I can purchase instead of renting because I see myself outgrowing this space. I always see my future, whether it's six months to a year, I, I just see it, and, and it's been like that every time, so I can call it how I see it. I'm a, I'm a person who believes in what I speak, and I want to speak in what I believe. So um, in five years, I like to see myself in some other countries because I had the opportunity to do a lady from Germany about three weeks ago, and her biggest thing was there's no one to do my hair over there. And she said, there are a lot of Africans, and she said, but they braid, and I don't want braids or extensions. I just want my hair done. And she told me she flew to London once a month to get her hair done. And I said, really? She was like, yes, the whole European country needs you. Oh, and I said, well, tell them I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> I am on the way. So, um, because there is a need, there are a lot of mixed children out there who have parents who don't know what to do with yeah, their hair. It's a whole different type of hair. Yes. So, I I'm, I want to explain go globally. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And not just with hair. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a, I'm an artist. Period. All right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll touch on that. We'll touch on that. And uh, my last question and my favorite, to be honest with you. What words of encouragement would you have for someone who's just starting out? You know, that first step into really pushing yourself by yourself is really a tough one because you don't know, you know, what's out there. You don't know if you're going to be successful. What words of encouragement would you have for them just to take that leap of faith and, and gamble on themselves? I would say have faith. Sharpen your skill set as much as possible. Get with a reputable stylist who's been in the game and doesn't mind teaching you um, and helping you grow. And just always stay on top of your craft. Always know the the newest technology, the, the newest styles, you know, anything innovative to help your business grow because it makes a difference. You always want to offer something someone else isn't giving. Mm -hmm. And you always, to me, be in a place where there's a need. I mean, you have New York, Atlanta, Chicago, Miami, all these places, but there are the rest of the cities and, you know, in little country towns that, that need people as well. So I say go where there's a need because if, if it's really your passion, the money's going to come mm -hmm. and, and you'll grow and the people will come. You know, so that's that's my advice to anyone getting in this game. And also have you uh, um, a backup trade or something else on the side, you know, to, to help you along with that until you build up the clientele because it's not like it's just going to come, you know, and it may, you know, you may have clientele while you're in school or something, you, you know, you're doing ahead of time, maybe a kitchen kitchen, you know, I, I, I've been there and done that, but um, and get into a salon because you don't want everybody in your home. You know? Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. And, 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 and get licensed. So you won't have to shop pop <laughs> and you won't have to dodge state board, you know? Yeah. And you get those quality products at a great price instead nope. of your regular retail price.
You've been listening to 2020 Podcast, a business minute with Sir. If you'd like to hear the full interview, please go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com 20 slash 20 podcast. And also, if you're interested on being on our show, please email us at 2020datingpodcast at gmail.com.